Good day, everyone. My name is Nate Jones. I want to break into your thought patterns with a question that might not just rattle you, but rattle even those around you. The question I want to tackle for today is the question, why do innocent people suffer? Why do innocent people suffer? Father God of life, love, happiness, and joy. We would invite your presence today to answer the question for us as to why innocent people suffer. We now go to your word and <clears throat> We would dare seek for the answers there. But without you, Father God, we can do absolutely nothing. So we ask for the power and the guidance of your Spirit. That these words, which are Spirit and our life, may come alive and give us the peace that passes understanding. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Why do innocent people suffer? I want to offer you the two scripture texts that you can either write down or you can read with me just now. But I'm going to give you two. Now, there are others, but I'm only going to use two for right now on this specific specific question, starting off. Why do innocent people suffer? The two answers that I'm going to give are answers that relate to, is God the author of suffering? Is God the author of suffering? And the two answers that I want to start off with is Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 and Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the Bible simply declares, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. While God's mind is on us, 24-7. He says his thoughts are thoughts of peace. And maybe this is the reason why those who know God and who have that intimate relationship with him have such an abiding peace that not even the world can understand. But be that as it may, God says that he is more concerned about our future, which brings us to the hope that we as Christians have because in the midst of our suffering and in the midst of all that seems to go unchallenged, God sits above it all. And in the peace that he gives us, that peace is on the foundation of the fact that Jesus said, that I go, and if I go, I will come again. And that future promise is the hope that God offers whosoever will. If God is not responsible for human suffering, where did it originate? If God is not this, 
responsible person for human suffering, then who is? I want you to write down or come with me to Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 28. Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 28. The Bible simply declares, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he slept, while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. So the servants of the owner said, Sirs, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. Matthew 13.39 says, The enemy who sowed them is the devil. Now, make no mistake, friends. There is an enemy out there. And he is the enemy of God. But if you know anything about God, (laughs) yeah, you know that the enemy is of no match for God. And just you, just in case you 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 doubt that or doubt this. Because when you look around and you see suffering, now I'm, I'm, I'm diverging a little bit. I'm, I'm going off script for just a brief moment. Romans 8.28 says, And we know God causes all things to work together for good. Now, now, while I let you savor that, let's move on. Where did this diabolical being, the devil, where did he come from? Where where did he come from? I gave a video about how did we get here. You might want to take a look at that video. That goes into a little bit more depth than we are getting going into now, but I didn't give any Bible text or Bible references when I gave that story. So now I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to go to the scriptures and just deal with it from God's point of view, from God's word, if you don't mind. Where did this diabolical being come from? In Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, it simply says, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When you look at the scripture and you read between the lines, you understand that this is making reference to before the devil actually had his beginnings. He fell from heaven as one thing only to become another. But I don't want to get into it too deep. Let's continue. Did God create the devil? If you look in Ezekiel chapter 28, 12 to 15, the answer to the question is in bold letters. Ezekiel chapter 28, 12 to 15, the Bible declares, and you were the seal of perfection, says God. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were the anointed cherub who covers 
I established you, says God. You were on the holy mountain of God. In other words, God's throne is not just in heaven, where people talk about the third heaven. Yeah. While God's throne is in the third heaven, it sits even higher still. God has a mountain in heaven that only special uh, beings can even go into, as it were, the throne room to go up the, on the mountain of God. And the scripture says that this being we know as Satan, he once was in a position where he can be on the mountain of God. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Again, it doesn't seem like it's saying much, but if you go to that video that I did on how it all got started, and yeah, I break it down for you a little bit. What occurred in Satan's mind to lead to open rebellion? Yeah? What, 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 what was in his mind that led to open rebellion? If you look in Isaiah chapter 14, 12 to 14, Isaiah chapter 14, 12 to 14, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, <clears throat> O Lucifer? And now you have the name of the of the of the of the being that fell from heaven. His name wasn't Satan; it was Lucifer. Son of the morning, you have said in your heart, "I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above." the stars of God, I will be like the Most High. Something led to this being saying within himself that I'm going to take by force what is rightfully mine. And what is rightfully mine? To be like God. For he says, I will be like the Most High. You make laws, I make laws. What did his open rebellion lead to? And what ultimately happened to Satan as a result? Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, the Bible says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon was, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now, when you look at this scripture, it is clear that Lucifer and a third of his angels fought against. Michael and his angels and they were cast out and they ended up on the earth. How did our world become involved in the conflict between good and evil? How did our world become involved in, in the conflict between good and evil. Romans chapter 
5 and verse 12. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. The Bible says, excuse me. <clears throat> Therefore, just as though one man, I'm sorry. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of sin. If you jump down to Romans 3 and verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What the scripture is making reference to When God created man, God told him of all the trees of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the trees of the garden, in the midst of the tree, in the midst of the garden, God says, don't eat thereof, for in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And there's a whole backdrop to the story as to eat why God placed that law as such. Lucifer, who has a problem with laws, wanted to prove to the angels that they needed a better lawgiver because God was reckless with his laws. So to prove that God was reckless with his laws, Lucifer got to the tree and he talked to Eve for just a brief moment and he asked, uh, hey, what do you think about this fruit? And she put in a few extra words that God didn't say, but she said that God said we shouldn't eat it nor touch it. God never said anything about touching it. He said don't eat it. But anyway. But when she entered into that conversation, the devil says I got her. Because once you interact with him, you can never win with any argument with him. So to make a long story short, she, she ended up uh, eating off of the tree. And then she ran to her husband as if it was the best thing that ever happened to her. But when he saw her and knew right away that uh, yeah, he did not want to be without her, so he, he ate. And as a result of them disobeying God, it set the stage up for Lucifer, the devil, to say to aha, now I got God right where I want him. Because he said, according to his law, that in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. How can God be just and not show mercy? And how can God be merciful and not be just? I got him. So that's how we got involved with the conflict. But if you know anything about God, God wasn't taken off guard. As a result of humanity's fall, what does Satan now claim as his? Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. I'm almost closing now. Luke chapter 4, 5 and 6. The Bible says, Then the devil showed him all of the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomsoever 
I wish. While it was true that as a result of Adam yielding to the whims of the devil, he handed over his birthright as the head of the earth to Lucifer. But God, who, who is love, sent us a remedy for the situation. And because the devil is a liar, you, you, you have to understand how everything he says is a lie. There is nothing that comes out of his mouth that is truth, even if it appears to be truth. Don't even entertain it because it's a lie. And how do we know that it's a lie than, than what he said? He says, oh, I can give all of this stuff to you. I can give it to whom I want. <sighs> Let me say it this way. What has God done to redeem our planet? which has yielded, which was given to Satan as a result of his temptation to eat, to Adam. What did God do to redeem our world, our planet? John 3.16, the Bible simply says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, the truth of the matter is, is that it was important for God to be born a man so that in his being born a man, as a son of Adam, it was become on Lucifer to get him to do as his father did, which was Adam. And if he obeyed, then the earth would be rightfully his because the earth becomes the seed of the offspring if the offspring can obey God without flaw. See, the devil left that part out because before the Son of God, all men were subject to sin because all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you see, it was important for the second Adam to be born of a virgin. And this is the point that most people don't understand. Had the Son of God been born of the seed of Adam, then he too would have been under the control of Satan. But he was not born of man. He was born of God. Therefore, he is the Son of of God. So now, as a result of him being born the Son of God, the question that God is asking is, can you get him to do what you got his father to do? And then, if you don't, then what earth are you talking about you can give to who? You see? Which brings us to the ultimate point. We may be in this mess, <laughs> but God is constantly reminding us of the future. And in that future is housed a hope. And in that hope is the answer that trembles the devil. My name is Nate Jones. Father God, we thank you for this moment in time. 
And yes, the innocent still suffer at the hands of your enemy. And while it is true that there is still rape, mayhem, and every vice that goes on, you, O oh God, have your mind and your eye fixed on us all. And if we could learn to but trust you, no matter what weapon formed against us is, is, is hurled or unfurled, you stand behind the scenes to create and cause all things to work together for good. And if we need to pass through the fire, you are there to comfort us with the hope that one day you make all things new. Keep us in this your love, for we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.